Right, we are beginning our discussion now focusing on the um, external examination that was written by some students um, at actually um, a school, Lower Big Ridge Primary School um, in 2019. And we are looking at how we can uh, be in a position to do this in our discussion today. Mathematics Paper 2. Um, and the examiner is clear, the instructions. Uh, strictly, no calculators may be used, so we are not allowed to use calculators. Read through your questions carefully, write neatly and legibly with a sharp pencil. Once done, go through your paper to check all your answers again. Okay, we are there. Right, so we're going to be looking at first at section A. Section A is about two-dimensional shapes, 2D shapes, two-dimensional shapes, triangles, and angles. Let's get started. Section A says, study the shapes below and answer the questions that follow. Study the shapes below and answer the questions that follow. Right, if you look at 1A, we have this shape here, and you have that shape there. Okay. And now, here is the question. Identify the two quadrilaterals. Identify the two quadrilaterals. What do you think Roman figure one is? This one here. What do you think that is? It's a rectangle. Well done. It is a rectangle. Okay, so we have a rectangle. What do you think this one is? A parallelogram. Well done. It is a para. It's a parallelogram. It's a parallelogram. Right. That's correct. So give one similarity between the two quads. Okay. Um, what is the similarity? One similarity between the two quads. How, what is the similarity between these two? In what way are the two similar? Um, uh, their opposite sides are equal. Good, both, both quads. Both quads have Opposite opposite sides equal. Give one difference between the two quadrilaterals. There is a difference between the two quadrilaterals. What is the difference? They are not 90 degree angles. Okay, good. All right. One thing that we know is that your rectangle, that's correct, you're right. A rectangle has two, two lines of symmetry. Parallelogram. Parallelogram has none. So a rectangle has two lines of symmetry. A parallelogram has none. So that is one distinction. But also you can note that um, each of the interior angles here um, are actually um, equal. But in the case of this, the opposite angles are equal. So um, in a rectangle, each angle, angle is 90 degrees 
is 90 degrees in a rectangle. Uh, here you come and say the opposite. Angles in a parallelogram are equal. But not, not necessarily 90 degrees. Okay, you can say a rectangle has two lines of symmetry. Namely, a line of symmetry would be this. Another one would be that. Can I have multiple lines of symmetry? So in other words, Now we actually can actually see that we have no line of symmetry in the case of the um, of the parallelogram. Next question. Start the triangles and answer the questions that follow. Identify the following triangles and give a reason for your answer. Okay. Um, So here you can say that rectangle has at least has at least two lines of symmetry because you can count one, two, you can count three, four. Etc. Okay, so as at least two lines of symmetry, when the par parallelogram has none. Right, if you look at two, for example, start the triangles and answer the questions that follow. Right, here is one triangle that has all the sides equal to each other. Here's a triangle that has a right angle inside, and here's another triangle here. Okay, uh, yeah, this triangle appears to have moved. Yeah, we're going to sort that out. Because you can see that these marks were potentially parts of uh, were markings on um, a triangle. Okay, so we continue. Identify the following triangles and give the reason for your answer. Like in two bit one, Roman figure one. Need to identify the following triangles and give him, and, and give a reason for your answer. Right. What is Roman figure on this triangle? What is it? What is the reason as mm. well? What do you think? Says so it congruent. Okay, all the sides are equal to each other, and therefore it's called equilateral. It's called equilateral. Why is it called equilateral? All sides equal or all sides are the same? All sides are the same length. Okay. Okay, now what do you think shape two is? Um... You might, because we need to identify the triangle. What is it called? Is it... Uh... Yes. Okay, it is called right angled. Oh, right angled. It is called a right angled triangle. We call it a right angled, right angled triangle. The reason for the answer is that it has one. It has only one right, right angle. 
there's only one right angle. Okay, remember figure th uh, three, what do we call this shape? Okay, so I uh, was saying these things have moved. So yeah, these markings are supposed to be on the on the sides there. What do you call the shape? Triangle Roman figure three, what is it called? Uh, so is it a isosceles? It's called an isosceles triangle. It is called an isosceles triangle. Why is it called isosceles? Because it has two equal sides. Yeah. Two, two sides equal. Because it has two sides equal. Or you can alternatively say two angles, two angles equal. Okay, 2.2. Calculate the size of angle A to D, right through to D. Okay, let's check this one. Calculate the size, the size of angle A to D. What is angle A in your view? What is what is the size? We're looking for the size of angle A. What is the size of this angle? Uh, let's see. Okay. Yes. Yes, so what do you think the size is? Says it 40. Well, a triangle that is called equilateral with all the sides equal, all the angles are equal. Oh, so each, okay. yeah, all the angles are equal. If you add them up, they give 180 degrees. So each one must be 60 degrees. So in other words, A is equal to 60. A is equal to 60 degrees because 60 plus 60 plus 60 is equal to what? Uh, 180. 180 degrees. And that is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. The sum is 180 degrees. Next. Okay, B. What is the size of angle B? Uh, so is it 48? Why? So, because you need to add up the 90 degree angle plus 42. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, but need to check, need to check. So, in other words, we will we'll have B plus, so we'll have B plus 42 degrees plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. This is the sum of the interior angles of triangle. So B is equal to, what is 42 plus 90? 132. 132. 132 degrees equals 180 degrees. Next. So B. Is 180 degrees minus 132. What is 180 minus 132? 48. Okay. 48 degrees. All right. So that's noted. 48 degrees. In other words, B is 48 degrees. Well done. Okay. Next, what is C? Uh, okay. Is it 65? Well done, degrees. 65 degrees, why? 
because it's an it's isn't an isosceles meaning yeah the reason and, of this yeah. is simply because um if you check very carefully it is isosceles and therefore this angle must be equal to this angle here and this one they've just put c there for it but it must also be 65 degrees what is d uh, so where is D? That's a good question. Where is D? Where is D? Okay, I'll just uh, show you now. Okay, I'll just show you now where uh, D is. Okay. Right. This here. What is D? Uh, let me calculate. Mm. So is D f f uh, um so is this uh, 50 please come again 50 why 65 plus 65 equals 130 plus 50 gives you 180 so Okay, so that's one thirty plus fifty, which is one eighty. That's correct. Well done. Excellent. Next question. Right, let's look at two point three. Calculate the missing angles in the following diagrams. A B C. According to you, what is the size of angle A and why? Angle A. Uh... So is it 55? Why? So, because this is a 90 degree angle, so you need to add up uh, angle A. Well done. It is five, five, five degrees. Five, five degrees. Because it must add up to 90 degrees with a 35. Correct. Okay. What is B? This so, one. 90. B. So, so, it's a 90 degree angle. B is actually a 90 degree angle. Well done. C. What is C? Okay. We are thinking about C. We are thinking about C. Uh, What's the answer? Is it 110? 
Why? So does this need to add up to 360? So I added up all of the numbers, 80 plus 100 plus 70, which gives us uh, um, 250. Then 250 plus 10, 110 gives us 360. Okay. I hear you. Let's just check that. I mean, you really are on point. You really are on point. C is 110. C is 110 degrees. Next. Measure the following angles using a protractor and identify what kind of angle each are. All right, this is gonna be tricky because you don't have the question paper and now you're just seeing it on screen, but you know how to use a protractor. Yes, sir. All right. I'm fine with me. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, but just do that. You need to you need to learn, but it's okay. It's okay. So I'm gonna give you the sizes, okay? Because if you use a protractor and you get 49 here, you get 49 here, and then we get 94 degrees here. And here we get 217. And then B is 94. Okay, so the kind of angle, what is the kind of angle that is 49? What do you call that kind of an angle? An acute angle. It's called acute. Well done. It's called acute. It's called an acute angle. 94 degrees. What kind of an angle is that one? An obtuse angle. It is called obtuse. It is called obtuse. C, what do you call that angle? A reflex angle. It's called reflex. It's called reflex. Um, I mean, I heard 217, but it's called uh, reflex. This is called the reflex angle. Okay, it's called the reflex angle. Next. Okay, if you look at 3.1, complete the table below. Complete the table below. If you look at the 3D object, the name must be given, the number of ages, the number of faces, the number of vertices. Okay, we're gonna discuss we're discussing this paper together. What do we call the number the, the name of this 3D object? This one. What do you call this? What is the name of this? So is it a pentagon? It is called a because it is one, two, three, four, five. The top and the bottom have five vertices. So it is called a pentagonal prism. Pentagonal prism. Number of edges, how many edges are they? Edge. Five. 
Okay, let's count. So this is an edge. That's one, two, three, four, five. The top has five. The bottom has also five. Okay, because you have five, then you have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. In other words, the total of 15 ages, 15 ages. How many faces are they? Uh, seven. Please come again. Seven. Seven faces, well done, excellent. The total, the total of seven faces. How many vertices are they? How many vertices are they? So 16. Okay. How did you reach that? Anyway, a vertex is a corner. So yeah, this is a vertex. One, two, three, up to five, and then five at the at the bottom. Five at the top, five at the bottom. So the total of 10 vertices. Total of how many? 10 vertices. Okay. Okay, now in the bottom shape, what shape is this called? This one. It's called a three-dimensional object, but what is the name of this shape? Is it an octagonal pyramid? It is called an octagonal pyramid. Excellent. Octagonal pyramid. Right, the number of edges. How many edges does it have, this octagonal prism? How many edges does it have? Nine. Right, let's count because now I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then six, then seven, then eight. So you have eight, then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, um, 16. Okay. So in other words, we have a total of 16 edges. There are 16 edges because you're going to count this edge, that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge, that edge, and then now you go and count also the bottom ones. So you see, you counted eight, and then you count nine, oh. 10, and then up to 16. So the total of 16 edges, how many faces are there? 16. Sir, can you erase the numbers here? Please come again. Can you erase the numbers? These numbers, eh? No, sir, the numbers on the period. All right, the numbers I've, I've written here, yeah, okay, yeah. Because now they are distracted, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, I can I can erase them because they make it a bit unclear. Um yeah. All right, let me just erase them. I just erase them.
Right, so I've raised them. So how many? How many do you think? Nine faces. Or you know, 10 faces. Okay. <laughs> Let's check. Okay, so you're going to have eight faces on the sides, like one, two, three, up to eight on the sides, on the slanted sides, and then the bottom is going to be like one face. So the total of nine faces. How many vertices are there? Vertices. So is it 18? 18. Um, okay. How did you do that number? So I had to multiply the number of faces. Okay. Think again, please. Oh, wait, is it nine? Where do you see? Yeah, definitely. It is a total of nine vertices. It's a total of nine vertices. Okay, um, so you note that one. You note that one. We continue and we analyze more. Okay, now we'll look at the transformations. This one's here, 3.2. Are you able to see the transformations? Yes, sir. All right. Which transformation took place in each of the following diagrams? In this A, this B, this C, like that. What transformation took place for these to become that? These to become that. Okay, let's start with A. For these to become that, what kind of a transformation is this? What happened? Uh, uh, is it reflection? Excellent. It's called a reflection. It is called a reflection. This one. So rotation. Excellent. So it's just a rotation like that. Just a rotation. This one now. Translation. C. Please come again. Translation. It's called a translation. Well done. It's called a translation. Okay, now let's look at 3.3. Let's look at 3.3. Draw the reflection of shape W is try on the diagram below. Okay. All right. Right, so how is this going to be? Okay, I know that you just can't draw yet uh, on the screen yourself. So draw the reflection of the shape that in the diagram. Okay. 
That's my the reflection would actually ordinarily mean a reflection in the y axis. So it would mean a reflection. in the y-axis, right? So if you reflect in the y-axis, so there are like two steps here, you're gonna have two blocks here, one, two. So from the y-axis, one, two, then you're gonna have this, uh, one, two, one, two, then you're gonna have a mark in there, like so. And then now how many steps down from this? Would count one, two, it's like one block, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. In which case, from here, one, two. Okay. And then now here, you can count diagonally just one across. So you're going to have this here. And then you're going to have something like so. In which case, therefore, you're going to have like W primed, S primed, T primed, I primed. So that will sort of be the sort of shape you're going to get. Leverage. Leverage, you're going to get that if you look at the reflection in the y-axis or a reflection about the y-axis. Next. Let's look at question four. These triangles are similar. Triangle DF is one third of triangle ABC. Give the length of EF. What's the answer? Um, okay, you let me know when, when you're done. You let me know when you're done. So, so is it nine centimeters? Please come again. Nine centimeters. Why? Okay, you say you can yeah. see EF, right? EF is this one. EF is this one. EF is this one. All right. And I mean, it corresponds with this, with this side here. The longest side of this triangle. So, but the other sides, like this one, that one, correspond to this. But the triangles are similar. What are similar triangles? When do we say two triangles are similar? When? Uh, same shape, different size. Yeah, same shape, but uh, different sizes. Okay, good. Now, let's continue. Then please give us the, the answer to 4.1. Calculate the length of EF. What do you think now the answer is there? What do you think the answer is there? Still calculating. So it's six centimeters. <laughs> well done, it's six. How do you get it? It is exactly so six to... centimeters. Why? Because... So let's see. One third, one third. So divide it 18 by three. You divide it 18 by three because it's one third of triangle ABC. So if you divide 18 by three, 18 divided by three is what? It's six. Six. That's why it's six. Okay. 
the length of AC. What is the length of AC? What is the length of AC? Are you able to see AC? Yes, sir. Okay. Says it's 24. Okay, why? Um, didn't you have to okay. say, oh, wait, no. Nah. Yeah, because for um, us, this one is six. Okay, if we are given six, how do you get the one that was there before? Because it's one third, here you divide by three to get six, but if you move backwards, you multiply by three. So um, six centimeters by three is what? It's 18. So you multiply by three. Six by three is what? It's 18. Okay. 18, okay. Same here, you have four. So to go back, you must multiply. So if you multiply by three, what do you get? 12. You get exactly 12. So that's the answer. 12 centimeters. What is the size of angle B? This so part is of angle B. Please come again. Uh, it's a 45. Well done, 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Okay, if you look at Name the triangle according to the length of each side. Name the triangle according to the length of its uh, of its sides. Okay. What's the answer? Um. Is it an isosceles? I mean, no, a scalene. Yes. It's called a scalene triangle. It's called a scalene triangle. Why? Because all the sides are, 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 are different no. lengths. Next, name the triangle according to the size of its angles. Name the triangle according to the size of its angles. Okay, what's the answer? Is there an equilateral? Equilateral means all the sides are equal and all the angles are equal. So yeah, in this case, not. Wait, is it an obtuse angle? Yeah, it is called an obtuse. Obtuse. Angled triangle. Obtuse angled triangle. Right, so it is called an obtuse angled triangle. Why is it obtuse? Because we have an angle here more than 90 degrees. More than 90 degrees in the triangle. Okay. Next. Next. Uh, 
Okay, we continue. Section B, we have the perimeter area, surface area, volume, and capacity. Okay, so the shape below shows the border of a farmer's property. Answer the questions that follow. Show all calculations. Okay, so let's get cracking. If the perimeter of this property is 3 to 5, find the length of side X. Are you able to see the question? Yes, sir. Right. What do you think the answer is to the question? Isn't it 72? Why? Because isn't it um, the same as, oh, oh no, that's 72. Please come again. Um, isn't it the same as, um, the, uh, um, the other uh, angle? The same as which one? The, the other angle that is, uh, The ones that are par uh, parallel to each other. Okay, let's just check. That are equal. Oh no, it's not. All right. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Um now to get X. What what's your answer again? I need to make sure. And you have this right. Seventy-two. So in other words, to get x, you need to say x is this one. So x plus x plus seventy-two plus seventy-seven plus hundred. Okay. Like so. Is equal to three to five. So you have three to five minus seventy two minus seventy seven minus one hundred. So what's the answer? Getting that, I need to check if we're right. 35 minus 72 minus 77 minus 100, which is 76. Wait, so mustn't it add up to, mustn't it add up to 360? Okay, because we're dealing with the perimeter, so perimeter means the sum of the length of the size, but they've already said the perimeter is three to five. So if we add all the lengths, all the lengths of the sides, X plus this, plus this, plus that, it must, it must give us what? It must give us uh, exactly uh, three to five. You get the point? Uh, yes, sir. Because it's not the angles. X is a side. It's not an angle. So if it was an angle, it was going to add up to 360. Yes. But angles add up to 360, not the sides. You know? Yes, sir. So you have that. So next. Okay, next question. Uh, the owner of this property wants to put a fence around it. What would the owner pay if the cost of fencing is 345 rand per meter?
What do you think is the answer to the question? Wait, um... Okay, let me know when you're done. Okay, so please let me know when you're done. Uh, what? Okay. You done? No, sir. Um... Okay. All right. Um, so it costs two thousand uh, two hundred. Wait, uh, um. So, oh no, um, okay. What's the answer? Says it two hundred twenty four thousand two hundred fifty. You close? You close to the answer? Right, what you need to do is to look at the perimeter. The perimeter of the property is 325 meters. The fencing is 345 rand per meter. You multiply this. 5 by 5 is 25. You bring down 5. Then you carry 2, 5 by 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, you bring down 2, then you carry 1, 5 by 3 is what, is 15 plus 1, it is exactly 16, and then you would put 16 there. Right, next you come to the number 4, the digit 4, 4 by 5, what do you get 4 by 5? 4.5, you get 20. So you bring down zero. Bring down zero and you get a two. Four by two is what? Eight. It's eight. Eight plus two. Ten. It's ten. You bring down zero, then you carry one. Four by three. It's 12 plus one. 13. 13. Right, next is 3. 3 by 5 is 15. So you bring 15. down 5, then you carry 
one. Three point two. Six plus one. Seven. What did I do here? Three by five is 50. Bring down five, then you carry one. Three by two is six plus one, seven. Three by three, what do you get? A big nine. So you balance. Right, here you perform addition. Right, so if you perform addition, what do you get? Right, so you add five with the zeros. Here you have 11, you bring down one, then you get one here. Okay, here you have 11, 12, get me one. Ten plus one, eleven. This is the answer. So we're asking the quiz if the owner of this property wants to put a fence around it, how what would the owner pay if the cost is this? So the owner pays. One, one, two, one, two, five. The owner pays one, one, two, one, two, five. Okay. Next question. Calculate the area of the following shape. Show the formula for each calculation. Okay, I'm giving a couple of minutes to find the area, please. What do you think the area is? What do you think the area is? And how do you find the area? We're looking at typical exam questions at the moment. So is it a 1,024 centimeters cubed? How did you get that? So you had to multiply the um, six times 16 times eight, then also multiply the centimeters gives you centimeter cubed. All right, um, obviously at this point uh, to find the total area of the following shape, what you need to do is to perform a couple of computations. But you can see that this is called a composite shape. Composite shape. And therefore, this means the area is the area of the Triangle, which is half base by height plus length by breadth. So area. So 
So, we know this formula because the top is a triangle. So, if the top is a triangle, then we say half base by height. Because this is 16, this is also 16, because the bottom is a rectangle. All right, so rectangular in shape, and we think it is a rectangle. Uh, so, the top is a triangle. So we have the area formula to use for the triangle and then the rectangle formula to use for the base of, of, of the composite chain. So using that formula, what do you think the answer is to the question? Using that formula, what do you think the answer is to the question? Done. No, sir. Okay. Okay, let me know when you're done, please. Um. Okay. Uh, so I'm struggling a bit. All right. What is the challenge there, uh, Lindsay? Right. So this is sort of the height and for the angle is 90 degrees there because we understand that the base and the height are perpendicular to each other. So if you look at the base, the base is going to be this one with the triangle at the top. So 16 times. Times the height, the height is six. The length is, the length of this rectangle is 16 and the breadth, the breadth or the width is eight. 
So we have rectangle here, and this one is the length, and this is the breadth. So right here, the base is 16, and the height is 6. So the area. So half of 16 is what? It's eight. eight. Half of 16 is 8 by 6, 16 by 8. Okay, what is this? It's the area. What is 8 by 6? For 48. 48 plus 16 by 8? So around 1 to 8. Okay. Right, if you add 48 and 1 to 8, what is the answer? Yeah, 176. 176. Did you get it? Yes. It appears that you're close to the answer. Okay, but that is the answer for the area of the composite shape. Okay, that is the answer for the area of the composite shape. All right, next question. Now they have given us, what do you call this shape? A uh, rectangular prism. It's a rectangular prism. This one is called a rectangular prism. A rectangular prism. Right, so if you look carefully then, if you calculate the total surface area of the following object, what is the total surface area of the object in your view? It says two thousand five hundred sixty centimeters cubed. Okay. Please come again. Two thousand five hundred sixty centimeters cubed. All right. How did you get it, um, Lindsay? Uh, length times width times height, um, the surface area. Uh, so the total yes. surface area, the total surface area is going to be, this one is the length, and this is the breadth, and this is the height. So which means you're going to have the formula is 2 into length by breadth. Okay. Something happened and this was just writing right in here. Let me just remove this. Okay, we are continuing. Right, so I was writing the formula, 
but there was just too much inking on the screen. So it's twice into the length by the breadth plus twice into Okay, because it's going to be the length by the breadth, and then there's length by the breadth. Okay? So it means that length by the breadth is top, it's bottom and top. Then we have also the length by the height, two times. Length by the height, length by the height two times. Okay, length by the height. Then you also have twice into breadth by the height. So yeah. So if you have the length by the breadth, the length is 20 by the breadth is 8. 2 into. Now you have the length by the height. The height is 16, but the length is 20. This is nothing. 2 into the breadth is eight by the height is 16. Then you get the answer, total surface area. Let's continue. So what is the answer there, uh, Lindsay, if we just uh, simplify and multiply everything? Right, the answer appears to be one, two, one, six. The unit here is the centimeter, so it's going to be exactly square centimeters. And that is the total surface area, total surface area. Okay, note the formula that given a rectangular prism the total surface area is this one. Okay, so it's to, twice into the length by the breadth, twice into the length by the height, twice into the breadth by the height. Okay, so that's the answer. Next question. Okay, let's check the next question. Start with the cube given below and answer the questions that follow. What is the volume of this cube? Okay, because you need to start the cube given below and answer the questions that follow. Side measurements 40 millimeters. Calculate the volume of this cube. What is the volume of this cube? 40. Um, millimeters. Please come again. 40 millimeters. Okay, let's check. Let us check. 
and put on the Let us phone. check. Let us check. What is the volume formula? The volume formula is that V side by side by side. Side by side by so if this one is 40, then it's gonna be 40 by 40 by 40. And what is the answer? Because the side measurements are 40, so it means the height is 40, this side is 40, and that is also 40. Effectively, the height is also a side, so um, the the length of the sides are actually 40 um, millimeters, so you get 40. So 40 by 40 by 40 is the same as actually 64,000 cubic millimeters. But you can also convert this. Uh, Okay, fine. But you can also do it in in, uh, in centimeters. Yeah, can do it in centimeters because forty millimeters is also the same as four centimeters. So here you can come and say four by four by four, which means four by four by four is what is sixty-four cubic centimeters. Okay. You can also do the answer in millimeters, but you can also do it in centimeters. Any question? Any no, question? No question. No, sir. All right, we continue. Okay, here's the question. How many liters of water can this object hold in liters? How many liters? Um, liters. Okay, you're done. Mm, no, sir. Okay. Liters. All right. So how many liters are they? Um, how do I? Please come again. So I'm try. I'm trying to calculate how many liters the. All right, all right. Take, That's fine. Uh... We have enough time to do it. We are practicing here. We are practicing. We are practicing. Practicing.
Um, I'm struggling. Okay, too easy. Um, is it 64 liters? Please come again. 64 liters. Okay, good attempt. Right, you need to know that one liter. One liter is one million. One million cubic um, milliliters. One liter is one million. Um, cubic milliliters. So now, if we convert, we do what we divide. So if you divide 64, Thousand by one million, what you get? So you're going to divide sixty four thousand by one million. So here you divide is like dividing by a thousand, so you can put some zeros here like this. But now this thousand has three zeros, so you move the decimal point three places to the left. So one, two, three, like so. Okay. Like that. So it's zero comma, you can put a point, but it's zero comma zero six four liters. Zero comma zero six four liters. Okay, that's the answer. Next question, in your own words, explain the difference between volume and capacity. In your own words, explain the difference between volume and capacity. Volume is... Uh... Volume is what? And then capacity is what? Volume is how much it is... Um... How do I explain the volume? Um, Can okay, the difference between volume and capacity quite in the way they are defined? The amount of space inside a 3D object. Okay. Please come again, you said what? The amount of space inside a 3D object. Yes, volume is the is the amount of space inside an object. Okay, what about capacity? How much um how much a 3D object can hold? Yes. How much substance? How is how much? Put small h here. 
is how much substance? How much substance? Um, can feel a space inside an object. How much space can feel a space inside an object? All right, if we look at number five. Below is, is a diagram of Peter's garden with a swimming pool in the middle that measures eight by eight meters by five meters. The shaded part is where he wants to plant grass around the pool. 18.5. Okay, so below it's, it's a diagram of Peter's garden with a swimming pool in the middle that measures 8.5, 8 meters by 5. So we have a swimming pool in the middle and we have those dimensions 8 meters by 5. The shared part is where he wants to plant grass around the pool. So he wants to plant some grass around the pool. Calculate the area of the shaded part. Okay. Giving you two minutes to try that one too easy. What is the perimeter of the shaded part? Okay, let me know please when you're done with the swimming pool. Let me know when you're done with the swimming pool. You went, um, calculate the area and shade apart. So it's, it's 28. Please come again. Is it, no, um, 14. Uh, 56 meters. Okay, how did you get it? So you had to add up the sides. Okay, because below it's it's a diagram of Peter's garden with a swimming pool in the middle that measures eight by five. So it measures eight by five. But this one is eighteen. So, what is the meaning of these now? If this one is 10, so this one is 8, and this one is 5, and this one is 18. So, okay, if this one is five here and this is actually 10, and this is sort of in the middle, what is the meaning of this here? So you have two areas to, you have the big rectangle and then the small rectangle, okay. So area, Big rectangle. Area. 
small rectangle. What is the area of the big rectangle? Right, the area of the big rectangle, the formula says length by breadth. Also the small rectangle, the formula says length by breadth. What is length of the big rectangle? Right, uh, the, 18. the Yeah, the big rectangle, the length is 18 by 10. What is 18 by 10? It's 180, but it's square meters. Length by breadth of the small rectangle, the length is eight by five. Eight by five is 40 square meters. Any real shaded part? Area of the shaded part is going to be different, so you're going to take 180 square meters. You can just put that right here. Minus 40 square meters. What is 80 minus 40? 140. 140. So it's 140. So uh huh. So the area of the shaded part is just you take the outer one and then you minus the the smaller one inside, and then you get the area of the of the shaded part. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Right, next question. If the grass costs 30 rand per square meter, how much will Peter have to pay for it? What's the answer? What's the answer? Okay. So that's a 240 rand. Um, please come again. What do you think is the answer to the question? 240. Let's check. How did you get it? So we had to divide the 140 uh, um, meters squared by... Uh, right, so obviously if you want to find the costs, you want to find the what? The costs. You always multiply. You always do what? Multiply. So you take 140, which is the area, you multiply by the 30. Like that. Right, if you multiply by the 30, what do you get? So you, you need to multiply 0 by 0, 0. 0 by 4, 0. 0 by 1, 0. 3 by 0, 0. 3 by 4, 
You get a 12, you print out two, then you carry one. Three by one is three by, you add four. Zero, zero, two, like this. So yeah, 4,200. So the cost is 140. So the cost the cost is four thousand two hundred, like we did before. Like we did before. Okay, so we continue. We continue. What is the next question, uh, Nancy? The next question is on data handling. Underline the correct terms that describe the graph below. Um, Which one is the answer, Lindsay? What is this? Uh, says it's linear. Um, why, Lindsay? Uh, because Okay. Yeah, what's the answer? Um, I'm still sort of waiting. Um, so I don't think we've really done this work this year. We haven't done this one. No, sir. So I don't do it this. Okay. But it's too obvious. What does linear mean? Ordinarily, a linear graph would be this called linear. Linear means straight line. And then there's a graph that is like this. When x increases, x increases, if this one is the x axis and that is the y, so x increases. Y decreases. If X increases, Y decreases. So which one is the answer, Lindsay? Says it non-linear. Yeah, definitely it means that it is non-linear. It is non-linear, but also when X becomes very large, because you have maybe X is one here, maybe X is two there, maybe three there, maybe four, then you have one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is X and this is Y. So when X increases, Y decreases, and it's said to be decreasing. Said to be decreasing. It's said to be decreasing. But a graph like this would be what? 
Why also increases? Is it linear or what, this one? Or non-linear? Non-linear. It's non-linear. It's non-linear. But is it increasing or decreasing this? Increasing. It is increasing. It is increasing. Next question. Draw a line graph of the rainfall in Cape Town over a certain year. Use the rubric to assist you. Okay, here is it. Here it is. Like in January, the rainfall was 10. In February, 5. Okay. So we continue. So let's draw the graph. Like in January, so you need to draw some Uh -huh. Right, so if you check, we're going to have something. Like so. Okay. And then here you're doing five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty-five. Okay. If this one is January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So January is 10. So you're going to put 10. February is 5. 
March is three. April is 12. May is 30. June is 76. June is 75, then just 76, right above there. Okay. Then July is 90. July is 90. July here is 90. August is 70. August is 70. September is 50. October is 35. October is 35. 35 is here. October. Next. Um, November is 20. 20 is here, then go to November. December is 12. So, which means that you're going to do this. Okay. Can I just join the, the points like that? And that is the answer. So that is the graph. So you're just supposed to draw this graph. And if they just drawn this graph, this is the annual rainfall in Cape Town. The caption of the graph is the annual. The title of the graph is the annual rainfall. Annual rainfall in Cape Town. Day in Cape Town. Next question. Study the graph below and answer the questions that follow. Which item is more popular with the foundation phase than with the senior phase? Because with the foundation phase and the senior phase, you can see that the foundation phase is at, uh, here is at, like between 40 and 50. There is also um, the senior phase uh, at 60. And then here you have the foundation phase at 40 and so on. Okay. Which item is more popular with the foundation phase than with the senior phase? Knickknacks and lollipops. Please come again. Knickknacks and lollipops. Okay. Why? 
it's more popular with the foundation face. I uh, know um. No, it's a uh, spookies and pizza. It's the spookies. It's the spookies. Well done, it's the spookies because the spookies are said so that they are more popular with the foundation face than with the senior face. Okay, so it's not really unique next because the foundation face is this one. So they're more popular with the foundation face than with the, because you can see the foundation face is taller, but here the foundation face is shorter with the nicknames, but here it's it's taller. So yeah, more popular than the spookies, okay? Uh, there, okay. And uh, you can see it's, it's taller here, but here it's not as tall with the pizza. But obviously, pizza would as well uh, potentially do. But we're looking at more popular, more popular, and the spookies are more popular. Okay, next. How many more lollipops do the learners in the senior phase buy compared to the furnishing phase? Get the question. How many more lollipops yes, sir. do the learners in the senior phase buy compared to the foundation phase? Okay, how many more lollipops? What so, do you think? So 15. Mm -hmm. What did you get? 15. 15, right? Because this one, obviously, you're going to get 50. Because this one is sitting at about 50 of the little pops, and then this one is sitting at about 35. And the difference is 15. So it's correct to say 15, 15 more lollipops. 15 more lollipops. Next question. How many items did the foundation phase buy altogether? How many more, how many items did the foundation buy, foundation phase buy altogether? What do you think? How many more items did the foundation phase buy altogether? So, so 145. Please come again. 145. 145. Well done. Because, yeah, you're going to see that the, the foundation phase, the foundation phase are the darker ones. So you can see that here they are 45. And here they are 40. Here they are 25. Here they are 35. And the orange is 145. So surely, it's correct to say how many items did the foundation phase buy altogether? So this is like 45, this is 40, this is 25, and this is 35. So the foundation phase bought 145 altogether. Next question. 
Arrange the following marks in ascending order. What's the answer? What is the smallest three, mark? Three. Three. After three is what? Six. After three is six. After six is what? Seven. Seven. After seven is what? Eleven. Eleven. After eleven is what? Twelve. Twelve. After twelve is what? Fifteen. Fifteen. After fifteen is what? Sixteen. Sixteen. After sixteen is what? Nineteen. Nineteen. After nineteen is what? So there's another nineteen. Please come again. So there's another nineteen. Nineteen again. So that's correct. So how many digits are there all together? How many numbers have we put? So okay, so we have two, four, six, eight, nine, two, four, six, eight, nine. So yeah, we have all of them. What is the median mark? And why? What do you think the median mark is and why? Twelve. Why? It's in the middle of the... It's in the middle, numbers. right. It's in the middle because if you look at the twelve, then we have two, four, this side and two, four, the other side. So 12 is in the middle, so it's sort of the middle number, and therefore the median mark is 12. What is the range, Lindsay? What is the range? It's like 16. How did you get it? So you have to subtract the uh, 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 smallest number with uh, the biggest number with the smallest number. So the range is what? 16. So yeah, that's correct. To say the range would be 19 minus three, which is 16. So you take the largest one minus the smallest one, which is 16. What is the mean mark, Lindsay? The mean mark. What is it? So 12. How did you get 12, Lindsay? So I added up all of the numbers, which gives me uh, um, the nine of the numbers. It gives you 108. It gives 108 and by, by 9, and what do you get? 12. 12. That's correct. And so the mean mark is what? The mean mark is 12. The mean mark is 12. Next question.
the mean mark is 12. The mean mark is 12. Okay, next question. A coin is tossed 10 times. It landed on herds four times. Calculate the relative frequency of it landing on herds. Okay, so what answer do you get? So it, so it landed on herds four out of 10 times. Uh-huh. So what is the relative frequency of it landing on heads? Um, what is the answer? Relative frequency. All right, they already given me the answer and you said the answer is going to be it landed on its head on its heads four times so it's going to be four out of ten times right four out of ten times okay which is two out of five can simplify this. So we can give this or we can give it the other way around. We can say 10 to 4, 5 to 2 ratio. Like that. So you can give it like that, 10 to 4, 5 to 2. Or this one, 4 to 10. The ratio of 4 is to 10, or the ratio of 2 is to, is to 5. Like that. And that is the end of the question paper. Any question? Mm -hmm. It was written out of 80 marks. Okay. Total of 80 marks. Any question, Lindsay? No, sir. No question. So we did this paper here and went through all the questions and discussed together. So this was an exam that was written as Mathematics Paper 2, 2019, by the grade sevens, two hours, total 80 marks, moderators, and the examiner. Thanks a lot for joining us today. I will see you again tomorrow. Okay, my, my expected time is 4 p.m. So yeah, I think I'll see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Okay, but you let me know if you're busy, then we can meet later, you know? Okay, sir. All right. Okay. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm going to send a video recording in the next couple of minutes. Goodbye. Hi, sir. Goodbye, Lindsay.